Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed Writing Automated Java Tests. Today we're going to have a look at collections. Uh, we will look at what collections are and how we get a set, why we would need to consider looking through a set of collections, and how we actually look through uh, a collection and find an element we want and do something with it. Uh, so, what is a collection? Uh, well, when looking through a site and identifying information we can use to allow the instance of our web driver to interact with an element, uh, sometimes it is simply not that easy. So, uh, sometimes uh, there isn't a unique attribute we can use and the XPath or CSS selector might be a little brittle. So for instance, we have a few links here which all have IDs or we've got a heading here which um, uses perhaps a unique uh, tag on the page source. So if you have a quick look at the page source uh, so here's IDs and um, uh, if we have a look at the heading it's a, it's a H1 uh, tag uh, which is unique enough for the page uh, but sometimes these unique identifiers are just not present so in what other way can we access these elements if we don't have any means of identifying them by s some kind of unique uh, method uh, well, one other way is to use collections. Uh, so what's actually a collection? Uh, well, a collection is effectively a selection of web elements grouped together. Uh, so for instance, all the links on this page can be part of a group. Uh, all uh, information on this page that shares a particular tag can be part of a group. Uh, if you go to the contact page, all of these fields can be part of a group and so on. Uh, so that's enough theory. Let's actually have a look at trying to write collections. So here is a, an empty test that I've written uh, using JUnit. All it does at the moment is it sets up uh, our driver, navigates to the web app as part of the before method and in the after method it just closes it. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and simulate this behavior. So when we navigate to the uh, th the home page or the or the landing page of this site we're going to try and find a way to click on the contact link and then we're going to try and find a way to populate these fields but without actually grabbing anything unique about this we're just going to assume that certain information such as this ID attribute doesn't exist we're just going to assume that for the moment and we're going to take that approach so the first thing we're going to do is assuming we are now on the landing page let's go ahead and write code that would help us click on the contact link without directly getting its uh, unique attributes and values so let's do that right. so before I actually explain how we get a collection I'm just gonna quickly revisit an old method the find element method and I'm gonna use the uh, the tag name and we know that the links on the page are all uh, anchor tags. So if I have a quick look, they're all anchor tags. So I'm just going to use the uh, get by tag name. Oh, how did I get there? Okay. And we know that this method will return us one web element with a tag name of A. Now, if we just copy paste this and now we change it to use the find elements method as opposed to the element method what this does now is this now returns us a collection or another way to think of it is, is it returns us either 0, 1 or more than 1 web elements on the page which fit this description so the conclusion here is that if we use find element it will return us 1 and it will return us the first one it finds but if we use find elements what that will do is that will return us either 0, 1 or more than 1 web elements which fit this description. So by using this, the find elements method, we can use it to retrieve effectively any tag on this page source which, which uses an anchor tag. So in this case, we can clearly see there's 4 here 
uh, including this one here, which is the, the terms. So another thing to note is it returns us everything on the page that fits the description. So it's not just a part of a page, it's effectively the entire page. So in this case it would, would return us five different links. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and actually uh, copy this information into an instance that we can uh, use. And I'm going to just copy it into a list. There we go. So now we have a list of links where each link is of type web element and each link is effectively a web element where the tag name of it is an anchor tag. And now we can use this information. We can look through all of these links using a, a for loop. So in this case I'm going to use a for each loop. And in this for each loop now we can look at each link uh, in the links list and do some logic to it so that once we've found what we're looking for we can then do something to it. So before we go in forward I hope you understand uh, the concept of a for each loop. So here I'm just going to say if uh, the link dot uh, get text uh, equals uh, something then we will do something on that link. So in this case we will uh, click on it and then we're going to break the loop. So if I go back and look at the source, so when we use get text, it returns us the text of that particular tag. So in this case, if we were to say you look at uh, the nav home link, it would return us home. If we wanted to look at the nav underscore adopt link, it would return adoption. So this is what get text would return us. So we are trying to click on the contact. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in there and there you go. So what would happen now is it would get a list of all the links it would then look through each link and when it finds the one which returns contact it will click on it and then it will break the loop so we don't end up with a null exception. And that's one logical approach we can take to finding an element on a page which doesn't have a unique reference to it but has other available information we can use to get to it. It's another way of grabbing a lot of information in one go and then acting on all of that information again in one go. So now we assume that our contact uh, test works. What we want to do now is somehow find a way to populate all of these fields again without directly accessing a field. So let's have a look at the page source for this so that we can get a little bit more information about this first. Okay, so here's the form. Uh, here it is. So what do we know about it? Okay, well we know that uh, they are all of type input tags. Okay, and we know they have a name attribute. All of them have a name attribute. Uh, and they all have uh, they all have different values for the name attribute but they have values which is important so we can actually use this uh, we can also get um, uh, TD uh, um, tag names as well but TD is actually sh appears in many other places so it might be a bit overkill trying to get TDs because we'd pr effectively get so many instances of it it's probably not very uh, sensible uh, but the one thing that's unique uh, to these fields as far as the page goes is that they all use input and input isn't really used anywhere else. So let's do that. Back to our test. So again, what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this uh, just to uh, save time a bit. And this time we're going to get everything on the page that has got an input. And we're going to call these um, fields. And this time, again, we're going to use this, uh, this same for loop concept. So we're just going to get um, web element and we're going to call it field this time and we're going to look through the fields and this time we know that they all have an attribute of name and each uh, value of that attribute begins uh, with the relative uh, type well the purpose of the 
uh, of the field. So uh, the name field has a name attribute with the value of name underscore field. Address has address underscore field. Postcode has postcode underscore field, and so on. So let's use this to our advantage. So we can say if uh, field dot get attribute uh, of type name. Um, let's just say contains in this case uh, name then we can quite happily assume that we now are acting on the name uh, input field we can just do send keys and let's just say name uh, underscore test in this case right so if we copy that uh, three more times I think so the second one we were looking at was address then it was a postcode and finally it was a email and we're just going to do a break here as well just to uh, stop us getting from an error so here what we've done is again using exactly the same concept as before we're looking through all the objects in the field uh, fields list and then for each given field whenever we find it if it happens to contain uh, name we will send this key to it uh, if it contains address we will send this and so on so let's quickly test it out and see what happens I'm going to save it first and let's run it okay so uh, it's clicked a contact and it's populated the four fields and it's closed the browser perfect exactly what we were expecting uh, I can easily take this test a little bit further and do some more validation but the focus of this video is to purely show how we can get access to various uh, elements on a page where the elements don't have any unique references and that's it for this video folks uh, if you enjoy my video and find they bring some new knowledge or insight into writing web driver tests then please subscribe and rate if you have any questions or video suggestions then please leave a comment below many thanks for watching until next time ciao